Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a webinar, a webcast, an online show. Um, call us whatever you want. Um, just nice things, hopefully, though. <laughs> Gotta stop saying that, I think. Um, but whatever we are, we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We also record all of our shows, and they are posted to our website, so you can watch them at your convenience. And I'll show you where that is at the end of today's show. Um, we do a mixture of things here, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, basically anything library-related, we um, put it on the show. So if you've got something going on at your library. Um, we have guest speakers that come in sometimes, and we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations, and that's what we have today, Library Commission staff. Um, we have next to me is Alana Novotny and Susan Nisley, and they are in our Technology and Access Services Department who are in charge of our wonderful Nebraska Access program, databases, what do we call it? Yes. <laughs> that's what's going to be answered. What is it? <laughs> that's, the top, that's the title of today's show. What is Nebraska Access? Um, so they're going to show us all the things that are, um, everything about it and the new stuff that we have now because a lot has changed and it's really, I think it's really awesome. A lot of the new things that are in there are very, I don't want to be it's a big improvement. Lots more Definitely. than what we used to have. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's We're a huge, happy, huge change. Yeah. Huge change and a good one. For the, for the definitely. Improvement. Yes. So I'll just hand it over to you guys to take it away. Um, <clears throat> you to, and you can make that full screen if you want to as you get to your. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and start off, and then I'll uh, switch uh, over to Alana partway through. Um, in our session description, we asked the question, "What is Nebraska Access?" And we gave you some multi-choice uh, answers. There was A, a website, B, subject directory of a website selected by librarians, C, home of the NLC statewide database program, and D, all of the above. Um, the answer, of course, was all of the above, and uh, we are going to talk about uh, all of that today. Um, I thought we'd start out talking about a little bit of the funding history of the uh, Nebraska Access Statewide Database Program. Uh, the Library Commission has been purchasing statewide access to databases since 1998. Um, we were able to start doing that at that time because uh, the uh, Nebraska legislature and then Governor Ben Nelson uh, made a special uh, $400,000 appropriation to the Library Commission uh, specifically earmarked for that purpose purchasing um, access to uh, online uh, databases on behalf of Nebraska residents. Uh, the goal of the statewide database program was to establish um, equitable access to a core set of resources uh, that would be available to all Nebraskans regardless of where they lived in the state, uh, whether or not they were served by a Nebraska public library, and if they were served by a Nebraska Public Library, regardless of how uh, well it was funded. We wanted everyone to have at least uh, access to a core set of resources. Um, one uh, advantage of a program like this is economy of scale. Uh, $400,000 seems like a lot of money, um, but uh, it would cost a lot more uh, if each individual library covered by the program were to go out and uh, pay for access to these databases uh, individually on their own. The vendors, of course, know that in reality that would never happen, and so um, they don't charge that uh, total amount to us as the state to provide that access. So we are able to get uh, access uh, at a reduced price cost compared to what uh, libraries would have to pay if they all went individually. Um, present day, um, for the fiscal year that started July 1st, uh, 2015, and that runs through June 30th, 2016, uh, the cost, uh, the amount that we spend on the databases in the program is $421,422. And this amount is made up of state funds that were part of that appropriation that has continued over the years, um, and then that's supplemented with some federal IMLS dollars. 
Uh, so that then brings us to uh, the question of how is access provided? And Alana is going to talk in more depth about this, but at this point I just want to point out that access is provided uh, through academic, public, and K-12 school libraries in the state. Um, they're our partners in this program, and they are the ones that are out there in the field working with their patrons, promoting the databases to their patrons, introducing them to their patrons. Um, in addition to access through libraries, Nebraska residents can also access the databases from home uh, using a Nebraska Access password that's assigned to their library. Um, they can also access the databases with the Nebraska driver's license number, and one of the reasons we established this access method is that not every uh, person in Nebraska is served by a public library. There are geographic areas in the state that don't have coverage, and so we wanted those people to have a way to get access also. Um, and finally, then, um, some larger libraries do have their own authentication methods set up other than uh, Nebraska Access Passwords or Nebraska Driver's License Members, so there may be other ways for their patrons to access databases remotely from home. Um, what I want to talk about a little bit now is uh, the Nebraska Access website uh, as it exists today and talk a little bit about why it uh, exists in this format today. Um, initially, uh, when we first uh, started purchasing uh, statewide databases, we had a page on the main Nebraska Library Commission uh, state agency website that linked to all the databases. And I'm just going to click on this link right here that jumps back to the Nebraska Library Commission website. Now, back in 1998, the Nebraska Library Commission website looked a lot different than this. Mm -hmm. But um, I just want to go here to point out one of the um, problems that we felt uh, uh, plagued us when we had all of the databases linked to from the Nebraska Library Commission website. Um, many uh, libraries pointed their patrons to the page on our website that linked to the statewide databases, and that was how their patrons got to the databases. Um, but as you know from website design, you usually have the main information on the page, and then you have uh, sort of related information along the um, top of the page or the bottom of the page or the side of the page. So you have lots of links to other information on the website. Um, the Nebraska Library Commission website, most of the information on it is aimed uh, specifically at librarians, and it talks about programs that librarians may be involved with. It's not that there's anything on our website that we don't want end user patrons to see. It's just that it's not relevant to them and not of interest to them. But it wasn't at all uncommon for patrons who were accessing the databases to, for some reason, click off on one of the links and then get lost on the Nebraska Library Commission website. So we really, we wanted something that was more patron friendly, um, something that was designed specifically for patrons that would hopefully prevent them from getting uh, shot off to some page that talked about um, C, the CE program or library accreditation or um, library laws or something like that. So it was a dream of ours for a long time to have a completely separate website uh, to house the Nebraska statewide database program. So uh, we were actually able to uh, make that happen in, I believe it was 2009, we finally got that done. So um, instead of going to the nlc.nebraska.gov website to access the databases, we now have uh, the nebraskaaccess.nebraska.gov site that is designed to present the databases and a couple other services to Nebraska residents. Um, this uh, page uh, gives you a uh, links to information about the Nebraska Access Program. So lots of the background information and funding uh, information that I provided uh, to you, you can find under this About link. Um, we did want to provide that background information to patrons in case they did have questions. And so it's also there for you as librarians if you are wanting to refresh your memory about the history of the program in case you're ever talking about it with um, people in your community. Um, 
we do have a link back to the Nebraska Library Commission website here, but hopefully we don't have as many extraneous links that would cause a person to get lost. Also, when you click on Home, on the site, you get back to the Nebraska Access homepage as opposed to the main Nebraska Library Commission uh, state agency homepage. So you can see this is a lot more uh, curtailed than just a page on the Nebraska Library Commission website. Um, one of the first things you see when you come to the Nebraska Access website is not a list of databases. It's actually a subject directory of websites that's compiled by our reference staff. This was another service that the Library Commission developed and presented um, that was really designed for, obviously librarians can use it, but also um, end users might be uh, interested in using it. And so I do want to take a few minutes to talk about this directory because I think it's an often an overlooked uh, service. Um, there are many subject directories of uh, web resources out there on the web that you might be familiar with. Um, the one that I used to use in the past was Internet Public Library. Uh, what's nice about this uh, resource is that it is Nebraska-centric. Um, our reference staff have developed all the categories um, uh, with Nebraska interests in mind. And often they will create categories specifically in response to questions that they get repeatedly at the reference desk. So if um, Nebraska citizens are constantly having trouble finding a certain type of information and they wind up calling uh, the Library Commission reference desk, or they ask their local librarians and their local librarians call the reference desk, um, we start getting a, a handle on what those frequently asked questions are, and so then our reference staff build those answers into their directory of resources. So um, just to give you a little bit of a flavor for how uh, Nebraska-centric this source is, I'm just going to go into art, music, theater, and you'll see websites selected by librarians, and you've got some subcategories, and I'm just going to go into theater and drama. And you'll see from these links, most of these links are for uh, theater programs um, that are in Nebraska. There are a couple sites here, for example, the Internet Broadway database that's of national interest, but for the most part, this is uh, a Nebraska-centric resource, so this is going to be linking to Nebraska theaters that you might not find in a more uh, nationally oriented subject directory. They might not get that uh, specific and fine-grained as far as Nebraska resources goes. Um, the other categories that I really want to point out to you are Nebraska Information and Nebraska FAQs. Um, Nebraska Information, again, is uh, going to contain links to lots of information that um, maybe uh, our reference staff get asked about frequently. Um, the first link here is a good example. Um, Many people have heard about uh, people being awarded the honor of an admiralship in the Nebraska Navy. Mm -hmm. So we all know that that's something that can happen, but how do you go about getting that set up for someone? Um, obviously, our, our reference staff have been asked that question enough times that they actually put a link to it um, on the website. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, we actually had one of our staff members send a uh, email question out to the reference staff saying, how would we go about getting an admiralship for somebody? <laughs> and because I always use this example um, in my classes, I, of course, like, You're even though I'm say. not on the reference staff anymore, I was like, I, I can answer, I can answer. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, they, they, they know what questions are going to get asked again and again and again, and so they, uh, you know, they've done a really good job of uh, collecting uh, those answers here. So. Um, it's good as a librarian in Nebraska to kind of familiarize yourself with some of the kinds of information you can get here. Um, you'll see right here there's also a category called writing a report on Nebraska. Uh, our reference staff regularly get uh, phone calls and emails from parents uh, from around the United States whose children have been assigned to write a report about a state and they've been assigned Nebraska. And so the parents then contact our reference desk and ask the staff to send them information about Nebraska instead of uh, 
compiling information and sending it through the mail or recreating the list every time they're asked that question, they've put together this website that has links to all kinds of information that would be relevant. Um, they also have this Nebraska FAQ, and if you look at some of these categories, you'll really see uh, how uh, they can be helpful uh, under this first category, uh, starting a business. Uh, in Nebraska, you'll see links to where do I get a commercial driver's license? Um, where do I make consumer complaints? Um, I'm a contractor. How do, how do I get a license to do business in Nebraska? So all of these types of questions. Um, in addition to just drilling down through the categories, uh, they actually have a uh, search uh, feature that you can use to search through this directory of websites. So I do want to point out the search box here. When you click on it and you do a search, you are searching through the text associated with um, all of the links in the directory. You're not going out and searching all of the sites that they link to, but you're at least searching um, you know, the, the, the heading words, the words used to annotate the, uh, the links, et cetera. So um, the example I always like to use for this is um, I was working at the reference desk and someone called and they said, I need to know how to change my child's legal name. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's the sort of question where you think, I have absolutely no idea how to answer this question. <laughs> um, but knowing how this directory worked, I thought, well, maybe the reference staff have been asked this question before, and so maybe they have uh, put something together in here that will give me that information. So I just typed in name change, and the first uh, hit I got was an FAQ category called What's Involved in Changing My Name, and I've got links to several uh, uh, websites on the Nebraska state government website that talk about the process for that. So, you know, I you mean, see it's different for whether you're an adult or a minor, too. whether you're an adult yeah. or a minor. So, you know, I went from having absolutely no clue how to answer the question to having some uh, concrete resources that I could point the patron to in, you know, about 15 seconds. So, you know, because of their background work, it made my job really easy. So, I, I do really want uh, to highlight that and encourage you to take advantage of it. So that is uh, one of the resources that uh, is promoted on the Nebraska Access homepage. Again, it's something that's aimed at patrons. Uh, Susan, do we have any questions about that before you move on? Uh, we will have Chris to check. Yeah. Anybody have any questions about that? Uh what Susan has told you about so far about using the, these resources on Nebraska Access. Go ahead and type into your uh, question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Doesn't look like anything okay. urgent is coming in. If they do, I will um, let you know. Okay. So um, that is what you get access to immediately on the uh, Nebraska Access homepage. And off here to the right, you'll see uh, the link that says Databases Available to Nebraskans. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that link to go to the page that lists all of the Nebraska Access uh, databases. Um, as Krista mentioned, um, on July 1st of this year, uh, the offerings through this program changed significantly for the first time since the program's inception. Um, we did retain uh, the first search uh, database service, which includes access to WorldCat because those are unique um, and uh, it's not something that we could get access to from a different vendor. But we did end up getting rid of most of the other databases that were part of the program and replacing them with a package of databases uh, provided by EBSCO. Um, EBSCO offered us a package um, and they priced it so that it would be equivalent to what we were paying for the databases that we'd have to get rid of in order to um, accept this EBSCO package and uh, we feel like we really got access to a lot more information and a lot more resources uh, that were going to meet our needs this way than we had before. Um, just to give you a little bit of a highlight um, the databases that we had to get rid of, because we obviously couldn't pay for new databases and still pay for the old databases, is we did get rid of the three ProQuest products, eLibrary, 
um, which was uh, always sort of a problematic uh, subscription for us when we first got that subscription. Um, we got it at a really good price, um, but access was only available to public and academic libraries. Mm -hmm. The product is aimed at K-12, but they were not included in the initial subscription. And when we went back to the vendor and asked for a price quote to include K-12s, um, it was it, it, the cost increased so much that we would have had to drop several other databases in order to do that. So we always had this service, which this product, which was a, a fine product, but we only were able to offer it to uh, a couple of the uh, audiences that we served. And so that was always um, uncomfortable and not what we wanted. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a matter of not being able to replace it with something else at, a co at the same cost. It caused some confusion for some people, too. They didn't notice the little disclaimer right. that was on there that said, not for, yeah. Right, and you don't want to offer service where you have to say, oh, you guys can have access, but you can't. Right. So, you know, it was always a thorn in our side. Um, we also got rid of books in print and uh, the genealogy database Heritage Quest Online. So in place of those, um, we got all of the databases listed on this page, and you'll notice that we um, have divided the uh, databases into two categories, databases that are available for everyone, and then we've also uh, highlighted databases that are especially for K-12 students. Um, and these are not mutually exclusive uh, categories. Anybody can use the K-12 databases, anybody can use the uh, databases that are aimed at everyone. It just gave us an opportunity to highlight some of the databases that really are uh, wonderful resources for uh, students in school. Um, these are some of the types of resources that we didn't have available to schools in the past. So for schools, we have a primary search database. It's a magazine uh, article database that is aimed at really elementary school students. Uh, we actually have an encyclopedia now that is available for students, and this encyclopedia actually uh, helps schools meet the uh, Rule 10 requirement that they have a current uh, encyclopedia available for their students, so that is going to save schools some money. Um, we have a K-8 K version of Novelist Plus, and then we have Points of View Reference Center, which is aimed at uh, students who are writing uh, papers on controversial topics. Um, for, uh, for everyone, um, we have uh, the master file uh, periodical database. And this actually, actually replaces um, the other uh, full text periodical database that we had in the past, OmniFile Full Text Select. Um, this would be the comparable database. Um, both of them are full text databases that cover a wide variety of general subjects. Um, they contain uh, full text articles from magazines and journals, um, everything from people uh, to uh, academic journals. Um, one nice thing about Masterfile is that it does include content from Time, Inc., so that means products like Time, uh, Sports Illustrated, um, Rolling Stone, I think, some of those other products that were removed from uh, the OmniFile uh, back in 2010. So we've got, uh, we've basically swapped out one uh, full text magazine and journal index for another. Susan, can I just add Consumer mm -hmm. Reports is also in that database now, which I know is very popular in public libraries for sure. Right, that's another um, magazine that wasn't available in the old Omni file that's now available in Master Files. So, um, so it's a, it's a good replacement database uh, because we got rid of one genealogy database. Uh, we got access to another product, My Heritage. It's obviously somewhat different, so patrons have to get used to a different interface. But it's much more international in coverage, and so um, we've. Uh, Initially, people were upset losing access to what they were familiar with, but I think people who've started using it have been pleased with what they've been able to find. They've found new resources that they didn't have access to before. There's a ton of new resources we didn't have access to oh, in the past, yeah. so it's definitely worth checking out. Um, another database that we had to get 
rid of was books in print, but we replaced that with novelist plus. They're not exact equivalents of each other, um, but um, they serve many of the same purposes. Novelist plus is a reader's advisory database. Um, it helps uh, both patrons and uh, librarians identify material that would be of interest to their users for reading purposes or for collection development purposes. Um, so, uh, like I said, we, we had to get rid of some databases, but I think we not only replaced those databases with something comparable, but got an additional databases that we didn't have access to in the past. So that, um, that is kind of an overview of the changes that we've had. Um, we do have information up here at the top. We've got links designed to, uh, for example, provide uh, users and librarians with uh, help information on, on how to use the databases. We also have um, several links that uh, provide uh, ways to get a hold of us. We've got an Ask a Librarian link that allows um, end users to connect directly with our, our uh, reference desk staff if they've got quick questions. Um, so that would be for um, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. We also have a contact page. And you can see we kind of have a hierarchy of who to contact. So we do talk about that Ask a Librarian link that I just talked about, how to get in touch with our reference staff. Um, we talk about assistance for Nebraska residents. We do try to refer them back to their home library to ask questions. Um, since there's only a couple of us, so uh, answering questions from patrons all across the state uh, would be a challenge. So it's not, Definitely. Like, not like we won't answer questions if they come to us, but we do want to keep uh, people's home libraries and home librarians in the loop. We do then say assistance for librarians. And in that case, we do give uh, my contact information and Alana's contact information. So you've got information on how to, you've got our email address by clicking on these links. You've got the phone number to get a hold of us. Um, we've got the generic uh, email address, Nebraska Access, uh, which uh, Alana and I take turns monitoring. Um, and then you also have a link to something called the Librarian's <coughs> Toolbox. Um, you'll remember when I talked initially about uh, the Nebraska Access website and us wanting to make it to be something that's really patron friendly, that has information that will be of interest to patrons. So that meant we didn't want to put a lot of information on this website that would be primarily or exclusively of interest to librarians. But we do have information about Nebraska Access uh, that we want to share with librarians. And so this link actually does take you back to the Nebraska Library Commission website. And it gives you information that's prob probably just going to be of interest to librarians about the program. And this is why I'm going to actually turn it over to Alana. So. Before we jump there, Krista, any questions about stuff Susan had talked about? Um, nothing's come in yet. If you have any questions, type it into your questions section. We can elaborate on anything you didn't understand or want to know more about or see more. They're not a very no. talkative group. <laughs> not today. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the librarian's toolbox then. Um, so Susan uh, obviously gave you an overview of Nebraska Access. Um, I want to talk a bit now about how libraries can access it. Uh, first of all, I want to point out this list of participating libraries on our screen here. Um, depending on how long you've been working in the state, um, you may not realize that at one point in time, Every library that is using Nebraska Access actually did have to register to be a member. Um, that's so we have the proper contact information and uh, just the basic information that we need. So we do provide a list of all the libraries that have currently uh, registered with us. And you can easily take a look at that and see if your library is on the list. We have the majority of them, but I don't think we quite have everybody in the state yet signed up. So um, if uh, your library or school or public library hasn't registered yet. We do have a registration form. Um, I know sometimes we have a school district where they start uh, have to build new schools. 
And so a lot of times we don't have those new schools in our records. So if that's the case, um, you would have to go here and fill out this registration form. It's very simple to do, just the basic information. Um, after we have this information, then we can easily get you set up and get you a, a password for Nebraska Access, which I'll be talking about in just a moment here. Um, as I mentioned, I just said there's a password, so let me jump right into authentication op options. Uh, Susan touched upon these briefly before. Uh, there's two main ways we usually promote for um, accessing Nebraska Access. First of all is something called IP authentication. Uh, <coughs> if you're not familiar with that, basically the way it works is if your library or school has what's called a static IP address, that's an IP address that's just assigned to your particular school or library. Um, we can use that to authenticate you into the databases. So if you would go to our Nebraska Access website, uh, click on any one of the links to the databases, um, the computer is going to look and see what IP address you've come from. If that IP address is in our files, we'll say, okay, you are one of the people in Nebraska that can use these resources and get you right into the database without prompting you for a password. Um, I think Susan said this, but I'll restate it just to make sure that um, we do have to have some uh, sort of authentication method uh, put in place just to make sure we do limit that access only to Nebraskans. You can say that. Okay, so <laughs> Susan and I do these things enough, it's hard to keep track some days of what we said today and what we said the other day. So um, but that IP authentication is one way we do that. Another way we do is the passwords. Now, the passwords can be used from within a library. Uh, we know there are some of our smaller public libraries in the state that don't have static IP addresses, so they will need to use a password for the authentication. Also, now the passwords can be handed out to your patrons, your students, for them to take home so they can access these resources when they're away from the library. The Nebraska Access passwords, uh, when we originally set this up, we have designed it so the passwords change twice a year on April 1st and October 1st. Um, we have right now just around a thousand libraries or institutions we work with in the state. So every time we change the passwords, that's a thousand new passwords to send out. Um, to help with this process, we send the passwords to whoever we have listed as the library director. So um, just to kind of help clarify what that is, we do have on our website up here a library directory. And um, you can search for your library or school name here, and it will list and show who we have listed as the director. Um, also, it will show what email address we have on file for the director. Uh, so just that way, if you have a question about who we're sending the password to at your institution, you can simply look there and see. I also want to use it as a good reminder at this point here. Um, we do have a link on the bottom of this page to submit corrections updates. So if you know your email address is going to be changing, um, please just send us a quick email and let, it, let us know what your new email address is. Uh, that will ensure that we get your password sent out to you in a timely manner. Um, with the, sending out a thousand emails, we obviously have a lot of bounces and stuff when that happens. So it's it's better for us if we have those emails updated constantly as they're changed, as opposed to trying to go back after we send um, the passwords out and have to deal with the bounces individually. Um, I will uh, when it comes to the passwords. I also mentioned the April password will be sent out right around the first of March. Uh, we try to send that password out a month ahead of time. That way, um, the librarians will have time to pass out that new password to their patrons and students. Um, as soon as you receive that new password in, the e in e your email, you can start using it immediately. Uh, so at that point in time, both your current or old password, however you'd like to look at that, and your new password will both work. So that way, there's, um, like I said, it's easier for you to start handing those out. Uh, the October 1st password change, uh, I actually try to send those out around the 1st of August before school starts. Uh, we want the uh, 
librarians and the schools to have that new password in hand right away before the school students come back. So that way they don't have to hassle with changing the password in just a couple months in October 1st. So that one was always sent out a bit earlier. Susan, did I forget anything about passwords? Don't put them on your website. Oh, yes. That was even in my notes. Uh, Susan <laughs> said, don't put your passwords on the website. I, some of you probably think that's pretty common sense, but um, I can think yeah. of at least four emails I've already sent this past year uh, reminding people that you cannot put your password on the website because that means anybody in the world can then use it to access our resources. Um, sometimes people just put it right up on the website. Uh, other times, though, it appears in newsletters um, that you may not realize when you wrote the article that would actually appear online. So you have to think about when you put the password in an article, is it really just a paper piece of item that's going to be circulated around your school, or is it something that you may see appearing up on the website? Um, unfortunately, if we do find a password up on the website, uh, you will get an email from us, and we will have to reissue a, you a new password. Uh, the other option Susan also mentioned, uh, we just haven't noted down here, is that you can use your Nebraska driver's license. Um, or if you uh, don't have a Nebraska driver's license, but you have one of the official state identification cards that um, sort of look like a driver's license, those numbers can also be used. Um, and we realize, of course, a lot of the younger students will not have driver's license. Uh, for us, though, it's no problem if they use a parent's driver's license to get in. That's not a big deal at all. I'm going to go ahead and jump back here. And I want to go here to the promotional materials. So related to the conversation about passwords, I want to point out the business cards. Um, I always can, um, you include a link when I send out the passwords uh, to our business cards. Uh, this is just a customizable template you can use to, for an easy way to hand out the passwords to your patrons or students. Um, and you can see here there's multiple cards per sheet. Uh, you can even use the, uh, a lot of the business source stores sell stock paper that has the perforations where you can just uh, you know, pull them apart or you can just put them on regular paper and use a paper cutter to cut them apart. Uh, and as soon as you type in a password in one blank up here, it will actually fill out throughout the rest of the sheet. Uh, I will make a note here though that um, there are a lot of different web browsers that are being used now and a lot of them are starting to use their own PDF viewers. So um, we're in see, we're in Firefox today and you can see here I can't type into it. Um, I do have the option up here to open it in a different view with a different viewer. I actually saved it, just also to save it. Oh. So now this is opened up here in Adobe. You can see I'm not putting much effort into <laughs> typing in here, but as I do, it'll fill out the card. Um, and I can just turn off that highlighting and you'll see the, those red boxes won't print. Uh, we have included information up here above the link that does tell you how to get the Adobe Reader if you need to. Um, also, now we have um, a couple new flyers under the handouts link. Uh, we have one for the K-12 and one for the public, uh, public libraries. You can see this is a full page here, and it gives you a brief description of what all the resources are. And again, you'll have a place down here where you can add uh, your password information. And again, if I would take the time to open this up in Adobe, I could actually just type in here. Yeah. 
the last thing I wanted to make sure I pointed out on this page is the help information. So at the top of the page, you'll see we just have a link to the basic information. And, and I'm, we're letting you know that we do have help information on the Nebraska Access website. So you may want to go back there and look for information. Um, next, we have online training. And you'll see we have uh, today's session listed. Uh, after the recording is done and available, we'll be adding a link here so people can easily watch the recording of the session. Uh, next, you will see um, another webinar being offered. Uh, Susan is going to do an introduction to Novelist Plus, and that is scheduled for the 18th of December. Uh, we do have a link there if you'd like to go ahead and register for the live webinar. Um, again, after the webinar has been completed and we get everything done on our end that we needed to, uh, we will put the recording up here and link it from this site. So uh, if you haven't used Novelist or only just started playing with it a little bit, I definitely recommend Susan's course. She does a great job of explaining how to use Novelist. And if you're like me, you'll probably end up with a long list of books you want to read because you were playing with it <laughs> and found stuff of interest for yourself. So. Pros and cons to the database. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, then the last session here, we just lay, um, labeled these training handouts. Um, this past fall, Susan and I went out and did what we would call the database roadshows. Uh, these are full, full day in-person training sessions. And so um, as part of those training sessions, we did try to put together uh, handouts to go with the databases. And so what these are, are the handouts that we had used in that training session. Um, and uh, Susan and I both try to write these handouts in such a way that um, you can still use them even though you're not hearing our in-person conversation about them. Because we know a lot of times people like to take the handouts back home with them and look at them after class. So we keep that in mind as we're doing it. Susan, are you using this handout for your novelist training? Um, I you don't know, know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say um, it's certainly not um, certainly uh, okay for you to share these. Uh, hand these handouts are really written for librarians. Um, they might be a little bit more detailed than patrons themselves who would be interested in, unless you've got a motivated patron. But you're certainly willing. I mean. Use your own judgment and whether you want to share them with patrons. Some patrons might eat them up, others might be overwhelmed by them. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. really are aimed at for you as the librarian to give you the overview that you need to use the service. And the last thing I realized I didn't talk about yet is the mailing list. Uh, we do have a mailing list specifically for uh, folks that use Nebraska Access. Um, I, I looked, if you're attending live, I looked and I think about only half of the people who are attending live have signed up for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to be added to the list, just send Krista a question and I can always add you right after the session here. But we use the Nebraska Access mailing list for a, a way to send out information that's specifically about, obviously, Nebraska Access. Um, it's, the traffic is very low, so don't think you're going to be signed up and get overwhelmed with a lot of traffic. Uh, for sure, you'll get well, probably about three emails guaranteed a year because I will send out um, an email after I send out the passwords to the library directors um, because we've heard from some some libraries that uh, there are occasions when the library director forgets to pass the new password out to all the staff members. So sometimes library staff members like to be on this mailing list. Um, so that way they'll see the note that says, okay, the new passwords were set out, sent out to the directors on a certain date. And so that way they can either go to their director and say, hey, I need the new password, or they'll just give us here at the library commission a call and we'll give the password to them. That's no problem. And so that, that will, usually two emails, and then I think you get tw two in October. So since I sent them out early, there's a second reminder that goes out. But um, other times, things that we use this mailing list for is if we know there is a particular problem with the database, and uh, for example, they're going to have to take a database down for some technical uh, 
improvements or changes, we will send that information out over the mailing list. Um, also, we will announce the training sessions like Susan is doing um, over the mailing list. Uh, this past fall, when we did the road shows, we announced those over the mailing list. So, um, like I said, it's a great mailing list to be on. Really, pretty low traffic compared to a lot of the mailing list I'm, lists I'm on. Uh, you can either subscribe yourself, or as I said, if you're attending live today, just send a question to Krista, and we can get you added. Yeah, just type into your question section of your GoToWebinar interface, and we can get that taken care of for you. Susan, did I anything else? Or if you do have any actual questions. Yes, we'll take those, too. <laughs> if there's no questions, um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump back to Nebraska Access then and take a look at the databases here while we have less than 10 minutes. Oh, we obviously don't have time to talk about all of the databases today. Um, I did want to uh, highlight the Explora resources here just because they're a little different and if you haven't used them before, uh, I think an explanation can be helpful. Uh, you will notice behind every database we have these question marks. I use these question marks all the time. They will take you to help or about page um, and that gives you additional information about that particular resource. So this is really useful in the case of the Explora products. We are looking at um, Explora Public right now. There's also an Explora primary version, and that was linked off of down where the K-12 databases are. Um, but what's unique about the Explora databases is they are actually searching. It's an interface that searches across multiple databases. So as you can see here, we are searching the Biography Reference Center excuse me, the Consumer Health Complete, Green File, Legal Reference Information, Master File, Primary Search, and Topic Overviews. So you're going to get results from all of those databases. The other thing that's unique about the database is that it has a graphical interface, and it gives you options to browse. So you can see here it highlights some topics at the top. And you can see they are relevant to what is going on in the world. Uh, or you have uh, larger categories that you can browse below. Uh, you can either click on a particular topic or you can just do the more option and then find a secondary list of topics. And again, uh, clicking on any one of these, uh, we'll go out and do a search for that particular topic. And so here's your search results. And I will note, also point out that by default, when you search either of the Explorer databases, your results are going to be limited to full text automatically. As I mentioned, we have the Explorer primary also. And again, if I click on the question mark, you can see here it's searching the biography reference bank, the Funk and Wagnalls primary search, and then topic overviews. Um, since this one is designed for the elementary age students, you can see the graphics are a little different looking. Again, they have a different set of images up here and topics they are highlighting. Uh, you can click on any one of these topics just like before, um, but since this is designed for the little kids, you can see now we have images on the secondary page too. And again, clicking on any one of these will take you to your search results. Susan, did you want to mention novel list? Or um, I'll just go ahead and or something else. Uh, just do one quick search in novel list as kind of a teaser for uh, the training session next week. 
Um, Novelist is a wonderful resource for reader's advisory. Uh, it's designed to answer the question, what should I read next? Um, when you go in to the database, there are all kinds of resources available to you. At the most basic level, it lets you type in the name of a book that you or a patron liked, and then it will give you recommendations for uh, similar books that you or your patron might also like to read. Um, so for example, uh, if your patron liked uh, reading The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and they want to know, uh, they've read all uh, three or four books in that uh, series, and then they want to read similar books, uh, and they want you to recommend them, uh, all you have to do is type in the title of the book they like, do a search, go to the detail page for that particular book, and um, I'm going to be talking about this in a lot more depth uh, next Friday, for, for example. Uh, we'll talk about all the different uh, types of information you will get about the book. But I just want to point out for today, over on the side, you have up to nine read-alikes uh, listed to the right of each book. And if you hover over uh, one of these read-alikes, you'll get a little bit of information about the book. And you'll also get the reason why it is considered a read-alike. So in this case, uh, this book is uh, both books, that both The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and the recommended read-alike are gritty, violently sexual thrillers set in Sweden. Uh, so uh, it's just a wonderful way to uh, find additional books for, your, for you to read yourself or for you to help uh, your patrons with uh, that sort of reader's advisory task. I like the explanation because sometimes you wonder why did they, you know, in other databases like Amazon or something, you might like this. And sometimes you look at it and go, no, <laughs> that's not at all related. And then the reason this will is let obvious you see, that it's a person. Yeah, which aspect, this, yeah. which aspect of the book is similar? So mm -hmm. you'll know, you know, is well, that an aspect that you really exactly, liked or not? Yeah. So. And Susan will show you how you can control which aspects of the books Correct. That, all that, that have, mat, help match the read alike. Mm -hmm. So. And there's hundreds of uh, recommended reading lists for all different uh, areas of interest that I'll show you also next week. So um, I think that's probably about all we have time for today. Okay. So. Yep. Yep. Does anybody have any last minute questions? Do you want to know more about any of the new databases? Um, what's in them? What they're about? Um, we'll give a couple of minutes if you want to throw out any of your questions or concerns. Um, we just have a comment from someone. Uh, Claudette says, this has been very helpful as I was not able to go to the road show. So, oh, great. Good. That's kind of was the point. Yeah, we know that not everybody, you know, you do do, I don't know how many you did this year, 10 or I don't know. A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Lost count. I know. It's like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just in case for people that can't get into the in-person ones, uh, we wanted to um, have this on so people can at least see, you know, what's going on. And I do want to encourage anybody who's, either watch this live or watch the recording of this. If you have questions, please contact Susan or myself. Um, we really do want to help you uh, get your access set up, answer your questions, whatever we need to do. Um, on, uh, you can easily do that by going to the Nebraska Access site, clicking on Contact, and then if you scroll down here um, for assistance to librarians, uh, our names are hot links here. Um, and it allows you to send us an email. Um, it also has our direct phone numbers there. Um, if you don't want to choose Susan or myself, you can just <laughs> use the um, Nebraska Access email here. Like I said, both of us or one of us will definitely see it. So please don't hesitate to contact us. Definitely. All right. Well, it looks like no urgent questions have come in while you're chatting, All right. So I think we'll wrap it up then. Great. Cool. Thank Thanks, you everyone. very much, um, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Alana and Susan, for um, giving us this intro to the new databases. Um, like I said, I think it's really cool, all the new ones that are in there. So much more, so many more resources. Um, and pretty much everything that was taken out has got a replacement. It's so a good replacement. Pretty good go. Yeah. Some. yeah, exactly. Better than what, yeah. All right, so that'll wrap it up for this week's show. Just type in um, Encompass Live in there.
Uh, the show has been recorded, is being recorded as we speak, um, and will be. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. Let's try this again. Hit enter. That's better. We're not for sale on eBay. No, I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> I'm controlling the keyboard and Chris is controlling the mouse. It's kind of interesting. Ah, all right. That's what I wanted. There's our page. <laughs> so our show is being recorded, and it will be available on our website over here just beneath our upcoming sessions. We have a link to our archives where we'll have um, a link to the recording when it's done processing probably just later this afternoon is about all it will take to get that all done. Um, I'll email all of you guys to let you know when the recording is available. Um, it'll be on there. So um, that'll wrap it up for today. I hope you join us next week when our topic is Tech Tuesdays. That's going to be on a Wednesday. Taking time to teach technology to technophobes. Um, this is a session being done by uh, Jennifer Cook and Peter Rudrud, who are from a library in um, Wisconsin. Um, and they have a program they do at their library on Tuesdays where they open it up for people, who, anybody who has techie issues to come in and help them. So um, they're going to tell you how they do this, how you can set it up at your library. Um, if you're having trouble having enough time to really get these technology questions answered, here's a way that you maybe can help your patrons out with that. So definitely sign up for that one if you're interested. And any of our other topics that are here, we've got our December, all of our December and January sessions are there on the website, available for you to register for. Also, if you are a Facebook user, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. If you go over there and like us on Facebook, you'll get notifications. Um, as you can see here just this morning, I do a reminder when our show is ready to start so people can log in on the fly if they want to. And I also post when the recordings are available, which there should be one somewhere down here. So reminders of upcoming shows. And there we go, recordings of um, when sessions are done around there as well. So if you are big on Facebook, uh, big user, please do go ahead and like our page over there and keep up with what we're doing. There we go. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.